Coach, as, as you mentioned, uh, you know, you're from the East Coast, so not a hotbed of water polo. I'm from Missouri, uh, also Southern Missouri to make it. Uh, I didn't know water polo was really a thing until I moved out here. So can you tell us how did you uh, start playing water polo for those of us that it's a, a pretty exotic sport? Yeah, mo most people on the East Coast just think it's uh, part of the gym class or, or phys ed class that they have to do for cross training. Um, I was lucky enough that my high school coach, he was also the swim coach, decided to start a program. And uh, we only had, I think at the time, maybe 10 programs throughout the entire state of Pennsylvania. So I was lucky to be on, on one, at one of those high schools that started a program. And he would always send us to everything USA Water Polo was doing, any camps, clinics we had to go to. And then I was lucky enough to jump on with Navy Aquatics. Uh, as I was growing up. So I played club team with Navy and they were, you know, always going to Junior Olympics. And that's kind of how I got exposed to the sport and coming out to the West Coast and, and seeing how other teams were playing and really uh, got wrapped up in it and, and fell in love with the sport. So for me, I was lucky that uh, my high school started it. He, my high school coach also happened to be my father's football coach in high school. So he was, he was old school. So he, uh, you know, he, just try to absorb as much information as he could, but he passed that on to us as players as well. So uh, one of the things that was kind of fun for me was we were all trying to absorb as much information about water polo as we could growing up. So um, yeah, yeah, I was just lucky enough that my high school had it. Coach, you uh, you kind of breezed over your collegiate career there, which was which was pretty impressive. Uh, so we wanted to talk I'll talk about that just a little bit. Um, you know, you, you played at Michigan for four years. You were, you know, you got some honorable mention, All-American um, records, and you also oh. hold career um, oh, oh, oh. points and goals. Oh, hold on there. We also got some career points and uh, and goals scored. Right. Um, can you talk about just those that opportunity to play and how that's helped you, um, how that's helped you become a coach now? Yeah, I think uh, just having having that player perspective and having that experience, you, you, you're going to carry that over as a coach and you want to provide that same experience to the to the student athletes that you're coaching. So I think just having those four years as a college student athlete, you learn, you know, maybe some things that you like that your coach did or didn't like or whatever. And you try to learn from those things and, and take that experience into your own coaching um, so I think just having that background is helpful <clears throat> in all aspects, I think, from the training aspect to being on the pool deck and um, trying, you have a better understanding of what your student athletes are going through because you've been through it. So I think uh, you're able to relate a little bit better. Hey, so can I just interject a little bit? Um, All-time scoring leader for Michigan. Um, okay. It was just recently Hello. broken due to the padding of the games that the uh, recent coach has done and uh, also Hall of Famer for CWPA. So thanks, Gab. Throw that out there. <laughs> Just for uh, for those of you that are in the audience, we're going to if you have a question, please use the chat function. And uh, that way we can kind of keep some some order here and we'll be sure that we uh, have you uh, come on and, and ask your question to the coaches live. But if you uh, push your chat function button down at the bottom of the screen, you can type in there and uh, we'll get to you whenever we get a chance to. So, um, Shana, let's talk about last season. So you guys were, were playing, you guys were 12 and six. You, you got, um, a big West win I saw, and then the season comes to a, a screeching halt. Um, so can you tell us a, about what was going on and how the team was rounding into shape? Yeah, I'll tell you, we, uh, we had really had a great start. Uh, we were picking up a lot of momentum. Uh, and um hello hello hi hi i think that's ron is that ron talking i believe that's ron i'm trying okay. to see what i can fix here um but yeah i think uh the you know the team was in in great shape we had a really great preseason we we kind of hello, hello. pushed it a little bit hello. After i i was i was on the, the first water polo team at long beach state in 1956 and we had eight players on the team. And we went to the state finals at uh, San Jose. And we drew San Jose for our 
for the first game and we were eliminated, so we didn't do too well. I, I had the same coach as I had in high school. I was at a Downey Union High School and I was on the first water polo team there. And my coach, I, I think it was Jim Schultz, was the coach, you know, there and in at Long Beach. So anyway, I go back quite a ways, and uh, I I just played the first uh, year at Long Beach, and uh, had quite a heavy uh, load. Otherwise, I worked 20 to 30 hours a week, and I had a extra 14 units at Long Beach City College. I had to take a math course. Anyway, good to see you all, and uh, good luck. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Okay. I'm sure you've got some great stories. Thanks for jumping on here. But okay. uh, yeah, for for the season, you know, we uh, we had a great start. I think the we had a you know a great group this year, and you know that that 12-6. You know, there was a few games in there that uh, we we shouldn't have lost. So. Uh, I think we were able to rebound from those and, and come back and, and uh, have a really good start to our conference games with a, with a good win against UC San Diego. But uh, we, we were starting to find our groove there, and then we got thrown a, a curveball like everybody else. So we're just looking forward to picking up where we left off. I think uh, <clears throat> the team had an opportunity to realize what they're capable of going into next year. So I think it'll be uh, a good – starting point for us to pick up where we left off. Coach, you guys, you guys finished, and we know that the NCAA has, has granted uh, waivers for your seniors. Do you have any uh, ladies that are returning next year? We don't. We had three seniors who graduated. We had a junior who graduated early. Uh, we asked all of them if, if they wanted to take that opportunity, but I think they were uh, all – already had plans. Uh, we've got one that was accepted into law school, one who is already uh, accept, accepted into grad school. Um, so, you know, they were already planning their futures and, and they're going to be doing great things. So we're excited for all four of them. They're going to go on and do, uh, have an amazing future uh, post Long Beach State, but I'm sure they'll be cheering us on next year. Well, uh, while we will miss them, I'm, uh, it sounds like they've got some good stuff going on. So, uh, Probably a good decision to go on to law school. Uh, <laughs> I, that's uh, that's good stuff. So yeah, we'll keep her we'll keep her number handy just in case. Yeah, 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 <laughs> just, yeah. So, um, coach, tell us about the the transition um, to becoming the head coach. So you, you, this is you know just been announced. You were the associate head coach this last year. Um, you know, just give us some backstory on on you taking over. Yeah, I think um, you know with with Gavin and Liz uh, jumping on board with the national team, you know, we've, we've kind of had a lot of travel and, and, and stuff going on over the last year or so. Um, so we were just kind of sorting through, you know, who was going to be where and when, and um, you know, over the last couple of years, uh, you know, Gavin has done a great job of, you know, setting a good example for me. And I've learned a lot and been able to absorb, absorb a lot of uh, coaching uh, info from him and, and stuff that he's also picked up. Uh, he's, you know, got a lot of experience. And so I think over the last few years, um, you know, that transition of, you know, there was a few times I had to jump in when, when Gavin was on the road with the national team. And so being able to pick up that experience over the last year or two uh, was great and, and kind of just thrown into it, which was fun. And, uh, you know, so I think with, uh, with the Olympics being pushed back another year, um, you know, we kind of decided this was a, a good time and, and we're excited. So, you know, it's, it's been a good transition. I think Gavin and I are looking forward to working together, you know, and, and picking each other's brains as we move forward here. And, uh, it's, it's been an adventure for sure. So we're excited. So coach, we want to, we want to ask what the team has been doing since the break. You can't get in the pool. Um, so what have you guys been doing to stay into shape and, uh, you know, obviously water polo is a uh, very physically demanding sport. So what have you guys been been doing to keep yourselves ready? Yeah, you know, we're in a tough we're in a tough spot because we need a pool and uh, they're all closed right now. So uh, I wouldn't say that, you know, water polo players are, are land animals. You know, we're, we're not out there uh, running and 
keeping up with the track team. Uh, so it's a new world for us to, to be trying to stay in shape uh, out of the pool. So we've, you know, encouraged everyone to, to get out and do what they can, whether they're doing, you know, a garage workout, or they're out running or, you know, using whatever they can to stay, to stay healthy. Um, you know, I think the message is we're going to be back at some point and whenever, whenever that is or whatever that looks like, uh, you know, we need to be healthy and in shape. So, you know, the team's been creative. I think, uh, you know, anything from yoga to, you know, uh, running, whatever we can do to stay in shape. So we're just encouraging them to, to get out there and, and, but obviously number one priority is staying healthy. So, you know, it's, it's been a creative time to say the least, I think. Have you uh, yourself done any of those workouts that uh, Laura <laughs> Teal sent out? Cause that I did one and uh, one was enough for me, I think. Yeah. I, I know not to do them because otherwise I'll be, uh, it'll take me a week to recover. So I'll stick to my, you know, spin and, and running. Yeah. So. Oh, she, she uh, throws tough workouts out there. I know a couple of the, the girls on the team have done them, and they, they said they're, they're pretty tough. So, if, uh, if anybody is interested in knowing what our student athletes go through on the uh, physical side, um, check out the uh, Beach uh, – beach nutri- it's not nutrition. It's Beach Strength Training. Um, they've got an Instagram and a Twitter, and they put out all kinds of workouts on there. So if you're – interested at all in uh, seeing what they go through give it uh, one go and uh, you'll realize the kind of shape that these folks are in so make sure you have some recovery time yes yes absolutely so um, all right coach well we're, we're going to come back to you uh, here in a bit but we're going to bring uh, Gavin on coach Arroyo how are you doing I'm doing great good morning everybody coach uh, you guys being a fall sport um, with uh, men's water polo in the fall and then women's in the spring um, you guys were in the middle of just your spring season. So what have you guys been up to um, since you're losing out on valuable time to, to stay in shape before the season starts in early September? Um, I mean, as you know, this, this thing is throwing everybody in kind of a whirl. I think, you know, for as competitive as we are and, and all those things, I think safety, safety is really coming first. Um, you know, for us, I, we don't want, I mean, normally I would say as coaches, we're always trying to push uh, the issue to get an edge and, and, you know, do those things. But I think with this one, we're, um, for me personally, I think we're just kind of like, let's just, let's, let's see what happens here. I don't want to, you know, um, put anyone's health at risk. Um, and we've been staying in touch and obviously we've been encouraging them to do things. We've been zooming from time to time. Um, some of the guys have been getting together and going down to the bay um, you know, purely on their own. Um, but, you know, other than that, we're just trying to, uh, you know, sit tight and get through it. So, Coach, that's a, uh, something that I just thought of there. So in the Bay, do you guys, is there a place to play somewhere in the Bay where you can uh, throw the ball around at least and get some swimming in? Yeah, I mean, we're in Long Beach, so there's water. Um, the – can't disclose the location it's top <laughs> secret um <laughs> and i don't even know the normal name for it and i can't i can't say the the it's it's it, it's something corner um but i think some of the people go there i i don't know what the proper name is for that uh corner um but i think everyone in, it's from long beach knows what i'm talking about <laughs> all right sounds good it gives you a uh gives your guys at least a chance to get in the water so coach yeah. is there are there any uh incoming freshmen and newcomers uh, transfers or anybody that we should be looking for uh, when we do get back in the water. Yeah, you know, we got we got a great, strong, uh, I would say primarily American class. Um, uh, a kid from Huntington Beach, uh, Cooper Haddad. He's uh, he I, I coached him on the cadet team, you know, when he was 14 years old. And um, he's going to he's going to come and help right away. We got a transfer from Long Beach City. He was probably the best kid in, in, in junior college last year. Um, his name's Julian Lubrell. He's he's from Puerto Rico originally, um, and he was he was down at Pan Am Games in Peru last uh, last year when I was down there. And the, kind of a funny story is he was going to Long Beach City, and he came up to me before uh, one of the games, and he said, "Hey, coach, I'm I'm looking forward to coming to play for you." And and I was thinking, "Oh, who's this six four? Puerto Rican buff kid, you know, who's coming along. And I, and I just went along with it. Okay, great. Yeah. Just give me your phone number. Let me know. And, uh, 
<laughs> Turns out he thought I was Chris Oding, the coach from Long Beach City. So he, uh, <laughs> but it's funny. Fast forward a year later, and he, he's able to transfer. So we're uh, we're excited to get him. Uh, so good deal. What are you guys? Uh, what are you hearing about getting back in the in the pool? Anything? Uh, any updates? I know that things are slow in coming. So just uh, give our folks some information about when we might expect student athletes back on campus? Well, you know, as you know, you're in the meetings, we hear a lot, um, you know, and I, I give a lot of credit to our administrators who are trying to navigate through this, uh, you know, new territory. No one really knows. We've never been here before. So we think we get, you know, an idea from LA County or from the governor that things are moving in a certain direction. And then <clears throat> obviously the past two weeks have kind of gone awry. So, I think it's been real difficult for, for everybody trying to plan on, on coming back. And I, I'm just of the disposition that we're just going to, if we're back and playing great, if we're not, we're not. And at some point we will. So um, it's just a matter of how that coming back together is going to look like and when it's going to happen. Um, but in terms of what I want and what we hope it's our hands are tied. So I think we're just trying to stay positive and, and, and grow the group together a little bit more connected as much as we can, you know, via computer, via Zoom. So, Coach, that brings up a, uh, a good question here. So, uh, Shana, this, this goes for you as well. You both have international players, and uh, I, assuming those student athletes have, have gone home, how are you able to keep everyone together um, on Zoom? You got time differences, you got – people all over the country. How, how are you guys able to put all that together, keep your team cohesive? Yeah, we, uh, we've we got, I think, seven seven different countries represented on our team, if I'm correct. So we're, we're all over the place in different time. Uh, the team's been great. They've, we've had a few Zoom meetings. I know, uh, you know, our Australian, Jamie Oberman, has jumped on a few times at midnight. And uh, it's just, you know, different, different uh, times for them. And so they've been great and super flexible as far as being able to jump on team meetings and stuff. We, you know, we just do the best we can as far as keeping everybody together. Um, and, you know, we try to communicate. We've, we've got a group me chat that uh, we, we keep everyone kind of updated on everything. So we do the best we can, whether it's email or, or messaging or doing a Zoom call. Uh, like I said, it's creative times, and we try to stay creative to stay connected. Uh, right now, it's summertime, so they're taking a little bit of a break. You know, they like I said, they knocked it out of the park with the uh, with the grades. So uh, we've been, you know, just telling them to focus on their their mental well being and their physical well being, and staying safe and healthy through the summer as we try to sort mm -hmm. uh, trying to get everybody back here. Coach, uh, you mentioned grades there. We're going to give you a second to brag on your team. Uh, can you tell us what that? what that GPA was this, this spring? I th I th correct me if I'm wrong. I think we are a 3.72, somewhere around there. We had quite a few uh, 4.0s this semester. So, you know, that was one thing we really tried to, to push at the end here was, hey, we might not be able to be in the pool and, uh, and compete, but we can still be competitive. We can still be successful uh, in the classroom. So that was the one thing that we still had going for us that we could – you know, be competitive and, and come out strong. So we try to take that competitiveness that we have in the pool and, and put all that energy into academics. And, uh, you know, they, they did a great job. So super proud of all of them. And coach, I believe that was the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was that the highest team GPA this, this spring? I'm not sure. I haven't gotten confirmation on that yet, but I would venture to say it's up there. I was going to say, it's got to be towards the top. That was, that was good. So <laughs> congratulations on on that we're gonna switch gears from uh, Long Beach State here and we're gonna talk about uh, the national team and, and what that what that's done so Gavin uh, you had the opportunity and I'm always impressed with with our coaches and in anyone who's who's had an opportunity to be an Olympian but uh, you were a two-time Olympian on, on Team USA in 96 and 2000 so can you just talk about that for a second and what that means to be able to to represent um, your country and have the opportunity even to be at an Olympics in your home country. Um, yeah, that's a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that people keep talking about it. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I mean, 96 as 24 years ago. Um, I mean, there's nothing like representing your country, you know, uh, you know, now coaching with that, with that group and, and, you know, dealing with some of the colleagues maybe that aren't so willing to let their athletes, uh, train, or I just don't, I just don't get that, that idea. Or, I mean, college athletics is great, you know, and we're all excited and trying to win national championships and things like that. But, um, you know, having an opportunity to, to represent your country is there, there's nothing like it. Um, I mean, I just said uh, walking out for opening ceremonies in 1996 in your own country, um, you know, seeing Muhammad Ali light the torch with Janet Evans, um, you know, just that, that kind of stuff that it's, uh, it's, you can't, it's, you can't compare that feeling to anything else. So. Uh, coach, how does that, how does that help you in recruiting? You know, you, you mentioned there that, you allow your student athletes to to play and train and, and do all those things on, on Team USA. Have you coached any Team USA people? And then you yourself uh, being a, a coach there, what's that? What does that edge give you? Um, I, I mean, I think from a branding uh, standpoint, it's always a good thing. But from uh, from from a standpoint where you're actually the practical recruiting advantage when I was coaching with the cadet team we were you know that when they're 15 and and you can really make an impact on kids at that age um and I think those two years that I coached that age group is 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 paying dividends now it's it's always so funny when I think you know people are are let's say critic critical of coaches and things like that it's the work's been done three years prior so you can criticize a coach for what he was or wasn't or she wasn't doing three years prior and that's the results you get today, right? Um, someone has a bad season. Well, it wasn't having a bad season. It was having a bad season three years ago, recruiting or, or uh, you know, those things. Um, but going back to, yeah, just being part of that group with the cadets and then with the even the junior. We took a young junior team to Belgrade World Champs a couple of years ago, and, um, you know, some of that stuff has paid off with recruiting, so. Coach, what do you see from your Team USA athletes or other coaches um, that are at the, the pinnacle of the sport that you're able to bring back and, uh, and display for your student athletes and, and really get them and our program heading in the right direction? You know, I think from a coaching perspective, it's, it's a great learning environment being around, um, you know, the game at that level. Um, I, I played with a lot of the coaches that are coaching for other countries and it's great to see old friends and, and, and just be in a place where you're kicking around ideas and actually having, um, you know, relevant talks about where the game's going and how the rules are affecting what tactics and just being on the cusp of innovation. Um, I think that for me personally is, is been one of the greatest things this past few years. Um, and then in terms of taking that information and, back to our own players. I mean, the one thing you get used to is, um, the level of approach to professionalism, to training. Um, you know, we always talk about all these things, you know, we have to motivate the athletes. We have to, our job is not to motivate them. If they're not motivated, they're, they don't survive on those levels. So, um, our job is to help, help them, um, with their motivation and, and direct them, direct that motivation in the right way. So I think, you know, being around, you know, our athletes and being around, you know, the European athletes, um, just a sense of what it's really like to be, let's say, professional as far as your approach to the game, your approach to training, um, you know, and that's something that just a, a reminder that what I have to do to our, for our guys or for our athletes, you know, having that standard that should just be second nature and trying to make it second nature and not be something that you're, you know, imposing upon them per se. We got a, a question here from the audience coming from our friend Laird. Um, Laird, thanks for being here. You've, you've been on a lot of these, and we hope all is well up in uh, Northern California. But uh, question for you on does the lack of a swim team um, at Long Beach State, does that ever affect your recruiting uh, for water polo? That can be for both coaches. Go for it, Shannon. 
I don't think so. I think, uh, at least from a, from a water polo coach's standpoint, I think we benefit from it because uh, you look at a lot of the bigger swim school, or, uh, schools that have swimming, uh, you have to fight for pool time. And so uh, for us, you know, we don't have to share that pool time with, with a swim team. So I think for us, it's a selling point. I think uh, we benefit from it. And, uh, and normally at this level, uh, it is hard to be a dual sport athlete. So <clears throat> we're looking for water polo players that, uh, that want the, the pool to themselves. So I think we, uh, and, and Gav, if you want to jump in on that, but I think we benefit from it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I maybe because I'm a little bit older, um, I grew up in the age, uh, you know, where Long Beach State swimming was 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 huge, and and so many great swim coaches came out of, um, you know, the Long Beach Beach Swim Club program. Um, you know, the John Urbanchaks, the, um, the Everett Chiamas, uh, you know, the Klaus Barths. Um, you know, it, it always went hand in hand. And when I grew up swimming and playing water polo, it was you know, water polo was a break from swimming and swimming was a break from water polo. And, and I think the Europeans even talk about the, this generation of American water polo players. Um, they lack the swimming background that we had growing up and generations before me. Um, so, you know, swimming brings a, a huge mental toughness component to, um, to, to water polo and vice versa. So, you know, I, we've specialized, I think, in our society now. We, you know, kids are specializing in sports at age 10, 11. And, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily uh, all that good. I think there's, there's plenty of room to, to do both. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I, I got kind of a swimmer bug in me. So I'm a little bit more sympathetic to um, or see the, the pros of, of having both. Um, I did both at Cal. Um, I was be, for me, I was between Cal and Long Beach state because they'd had swimming and water polo. So, and Santa Barbara, those are the three schools that you could do, or you could do both. And, um, so who knows? That's a good question. Gavin, you're also at a, a very different level where you can balance both of those things, you know? Yeah. So let's not forget that, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I, I, I agree. I think, uh, having that swimming background, uh, is beneficial for, for any water polo player. Uh, I was the same way. I grew up swimming, you know, my whole family swam and uh, actually my, my father-in-law swam at, uh, at Long Beach state. So, you know, you, you never want to see, uh, you know, schools lose programs. And I think that's, that's common right now with seeing swim programs being dropped. And, and obviously, you know, I don't think anyone benefits from that, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we, we lose out on recruits, though. I think with the, uh, the experience uh, of the coaching staff, I think uh, we're able to get some, some, pretty, some pretty good recruits in. Coach Arroyo, we'll forgive you on uh, choosing Cal over Long Beach State. Uh, I think you've been here long enough now that we can, uh, we can overlook that one. So got a question here from uh, Katie. Katie, we're going to bring you on and uh, have you ask your question. Katie, go ahead. Hey guys. <laughs> so uh, the question I posed was during a time like this, when you can't get in the pool, right? You, you maybe couldn't get together with your athletes. Is there a focus on the mental game? Is there a focus that's maybe shifted to maybe visualization or and any mental training? And, and, you know, may, you know, obviously for, you know, Shana and Gavin question you guys, but just, I think in like the coaching community in general, has there been a focus or a shift there? You want me to go? Yeah, you want to go, Shana? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Katie, uh, that's a great question. And I think the, you know, like Camden said, I'm kind of getting old. So I've been doing, I've been at Long Beach for 14 years and, 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 or, you know, playing, I think, that that component has become so vital and so much more prevalent in in all facets of the of, or any level of the game. Um, you know, on the national team, we have a we have Brian Alexander who specifically uh, deals with uh, the mental training and the mental side of things. Um, our former assistant uh, Dan Matulis uh, was one of his proteges, so we we had that component the past two years. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to. Uh, systemically get reinsert that into our program it's 
I, kids nowadays, they really, really, uh, maybe they think more. I don't know. <laughs> it's, but it's something, or maybe it's something back in our day that we just, you know, shoved down and just, hey, forget about it. If you're, if you're having a rough time, then you're just weak, you know. Um, and that just doesn't work if you're really looking to put these kids in a place where they're, if, if, if they're not mentally well, they're not going to perform. If they're not mentally well, they're not going to be successful in the classroom. So, um, you know, it's an ongoing uh, challenge uh, to make sure they get those resources or get those outlets. Yeah, I, I think too, uh, you know, during this time is a great time for, for student athletes at, at any level uh, to, to explore those mental training. I mean, I know there's a million apps for their phones out there uh, that they can listen to and, and mental focus uh, exercises. And I think, you know, going off what Gavin said, they have to be mentally healthy, you know, to be able to perform well in the classroom and in the pool. So I know I grew up with, with a coach who always uh, encouraged us to do visualization and, and mental training. So that's one thing I definitely try to push uh, on the team as well. So I think this is a great time. I don't know. I, I can't say that it's been a push. I think we're just um, encouraging everyone to stay mentally healthy. And, and if they, they choose to, you know, work on their, their mental training skills, I think that's a great uh, – take on it Katie yeah guys we got another question here from uh, Preston um, Preston wants to know um, is there a quick water polo 101 guide for those of us who aren't super familiar with the game and, and haven't grown up playing it um, I've been to a few matches and it's absolutely fascinating and I love it but uh, I, this goes for me too I'd like to know a little bit more about it is there a place we can go uh, YouTube. YouTube. All right. <laughs> you know, the, the former uh, Long Beach City co Olympic coach, uh, Monty Niskowski, uh, he, he's written a couple books. Um, um, uh, Pete, uh, Pete Catino, my old coach at Cal, he's written a couple books on just basic, uh, I think, basic water polo strategies and maybe a little bit outdated, but I think, uh, you know, it's some good approaches. I, I don't think people are – writing books the way that they used to. I, I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of hard to write books about water polo when it's such a, uh, you know, sport that it's like, it's like talking about architecture, right? You, you just, you have to experience it to, to, to get a grasp on it. You know? so. Sounds good. All right. So we're going to bring, uh, we're going to bring on our folks from the Bickerstaff Academic Center. So they're going to give us a little bit of information, um, about what's been going on for our student athletes uh, since campus has been uh, closed to uh, in-person class. So uh, we're going to bring on Sandra and Tamika here. How are you guys? Good morning. Doing great. Good. Can you guys, uh, for those, for people who don't uh, know you guys, can you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? We'll start with Sandra and then we'll go uh, to Tamika. Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Shirley. I'm the director of the Bickerstaff Academic Center on advising. Um, Tamika is, uh, works with me on academic support. I have, um, I guess you want me to say it, otherwise you will. I'm a former student athlete of Long Beach. <laughs> I was a softball player and played with Coach Souter on the World Series team. And I've been working in, as an advisor and providing advising and resources to our student athletes for 20 years now. Um, I'm Tamika Spivey. Um, I have been in the BAC now for uh, probably 11 years. Um, I am on the academic support side. I do um, work on the advising side as well, but primarily my role is uh, making sure our academic support programs are up and running and helping assist our student athletes in that capacity. All right, so we brought you guys on here because we want to know how education has changed and how you guys are bringing, um, bringing the classroom to our student athletes and, and helping them succeed. So we heard about the women's water polo team and their, their great spring GPA. And we know that you guys are, are a big part of that. So um, we'll just start with and we'll open this to either one of you guys. Um, what education's changed rapidly. So, so what are we doing to adapt 
uh, to that at the beach. Um, go ahead. Okay. Um, on the advising side, um, we were fortunate enough to have um, Zoom already available to to all of our students and um, all of staff. So we were we transitioned. We did a quick. Um, learning curve of Zoom to, to get through it in March and um, we transitioned everything to online and through uh, advising the university at large as, as well. We're currently right now in our orientation program with our summer students, incoming students coming in. So our, our, our students are working with us via Zoom online, um, receiving one-on-one -on -one advising as if they were in person. So we were pretty seamless in providing our advising services. We're currently transitioning a lot of our in-person presentations to um, online presentations for, for the students to review and they have it available to, for them on Beachboard so they can continually look back and review upon it as well. So that is actually a benefit of this, this transition um, as we move forward. So there's gonna be a lot more resources of, available to the students um, at their touch in their, in their Beachboard. Uh, moving forward, uh, the, um, all the faculty right now are being trained on all the teleconference and online platforms that are available to the students, and they're preparing their classes to be um, seamless in the, in the fall, I think. They are going to be utilizing tele teleconferencing devices. They, we have virtual lab opportunities. We have beach board. We have a lot of touch points for a lot of um, in-person contact, which was a lot different from the end of spring. They were kind of just throwing at it, um, trying to figure out how to finish the end of the semester. But coming this fall, there's a lot of great things happening on the academic side for the classrooms to stay in person, um, but online, but in person and still receive that faculty student conversation that they would have in the classroom. Um, and Go ahead, Tamika. And I would say that on the academic support side, um, we typically have about 30 tutors in our office and about over between 100, 130 uh, tutoring appointments a week. And so just as Sandra mentioned, we were able to seamlessly transition all of those appointments to virtual appointments so that our students still had the academic support that they were used to and had become accustomed to. So um, we plan to continue that into the fall semester. We are currently in the process of hiring our um, tutors and our mentors for the fall semester. And that's a big thing that we talk about is, and we speak with our potential hires about, is that it will be virtual. Um, and so as we move into training, one of the things that even as advisors we've noticed is hard is it's hard to build that rapport virtually. It's hard to build that relationship. And academic support is a lot about relationships. The students have to trust you as the advisor. They have to trust the mentor and the tutor. Um, and so we're focused on, you know, doing some training about building those relationships in the virtual world and um, continuing our academic support program virtually. How are students adapting and are, have they been, what's the feedback that you've been getting? Are they enjoying these online classes are they enjoying the freedom or or is it a thing that they're they're not uh, they're not so excited about i think um like gavin mentioned they're missing a big part of their world right now and i think that the athletic component of being able to practice and competition um that's missing right now and so i think it's hard for a lot of them who their identity is tied to their athletics and more so than their academics. So it's about showing them that, hey, academics is still here and that's still a part of who you are and getting them to recognize and kind of build on those skills. Sandra, anything to add to that? No, very true. I say we, you know, it's a case by case basis in regards to the, to the students. So we're aware of that. We're, we've actually put together a couple of surveys to um, survey the incoming students and the returning students about their successes and what they would like to see um, some 
more assistance with um, going in the fall with most of it going virtual? How can we support them as well? Um, and I think that's for academics, that's probably one of our biggest challenges is when we went remote in the fall semester, we knew our students. I knew how every student was going to react to this. And now we have a whole crop of freshmen and transfers who are coming in and we don't know how they're going to react to virtual online learning. So again, it's about building that relationship with them, having conversations with them. As Sandra mentioned, the surveys that we're sending out to ask them about their remote experience, how their classes were held, how their exams were taken, um, to get to know them a little bit and get some feedback. How are you guys uh, handling those incoming freshmen? Do you get a chance to talk to them before they come to campus or, um, you know, uh, how are you guys approaching the fall? Yes, we've had um, conversations with them through as they register for orientation. Part of our discussion um, with them is to get to know get to know them a little bit about their experiences um, and their strengths and weaknesses in that experience in spring that they had. Um, and then we're going to be following up, like I said, with the the survey. And then um, some coaches are having Zoom sessions with incoming students. And BAC advisors are part of um, Zoom sessions to just to be a pre um, an academic present um, presence at these um, meetings as well, which is great. And they're including us, um, so our students are seeing us regularly and knowing that they can reach out to us. Um, our advisors are looking at for the fall having virtual office hours, so the students can just pop on and see us, as well as email us. Majority of them like to email us anyway to to ask questions, so they they know they have a direct line to their advisor, and they're not shy. They they reach out to us. <laughs> they know when they know when they need something, then they definitely reach out. Coaches, how are you guys uh, handling the incoming freshmen and, and working with them through um, all of these challenges of of online classes? Gavin, you want to take that one? <laughs> I, yeah, I think, I think uh, like for all of us, it's everything is, you know, new territory. Uh, I mean, the bigger staff, they do such a great job with uh, tracking um, and, and helping us, you know, head off problems before they become big problems um, with holding the kids accountable. Um, you know, with this online thing, I've, it's, it's, I think it's challenging for, for them and for us because I just don't know. And the professors don't know. I mean, I have my kid, my kids in junior high, and you hear about high schools talking about grades or forget the SAT. And so I think everyone's just kind of spinning. I mean, I think for practical purposes, we're hoping that the GPAs are high and that we, you know, can be eligible. And we're in, I think we're just all in survival mode on, on every level. So. You know, kudos to the bigger staff for trying to work through this. I can't kudos imagine. Kudos to bigger staff because, uh, yeah, the, their their support with our with our student athletes right now has been huge, and I think you know the success of their GPAs this semester was a huge uh, representation of that. You know, as coaches, we obviously try to communicate and, and encourage them to do well and, and attend their classes, but. You know, the support of Bicker staff is, is you know, kind of the, the behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see and the support that they provide for the student athletes, uh, you know, is, is awesome. So we thank them for the work that they do and keeping everyone on track and, and helping guide our athletes, uh, especially through this time as it's been challenging for everybody. So, and I think just with the freshmen coming in and, and Gavin can probably speak to this too, they have a million questions, you know, the transfers, the and the freshmen, they want to, you know, they want to know when things are going to happen and when we're going to be practicing and what's going on with school. And, and, you know, we keep saying we have more questions than we have answers, right? But um, I think we just try to keep them as updated as we can with the information that we have. So uh, one last question here for our, for our Bickert staff team. Um, so you guys, we know we are very uncertain what's going to happen in the fall with with our athletics teams, but we do know that uh, class will continue. Um, can you guys tell us a, a little bit about the plan 
that the beach has uh, for the fall and, and classes? Um, classes are um, a, a variety of ways, though so they're they're going to be online. We're going to have a few um, courses that are in person that has to be approved through the chancellor's office. We're still waiting to hear the final approval on that. However, everything else, um, we're watching the the classes on the schedule to say online. And some of them will go completely online, which means that they will be able to the, the teachers will just create deadlines and post the information that they need and have discussion boards and they work at it their own pace in regards to the assignments as long as they meet the deadline of that assignment. And then they're also going to be online courses that are going to have a commitment to, so if the class meets on Monday and Wednesday, they have to be available Monday, Wednesday for potential tele, uh, teleconferencing platform to be online with the other students in the class and the professors. So it'll be a combination of that. The faculty are working on that right now. Um, so we're preparing our requests. Um, Tamika can talk about little things that we're gonna be doing for academic support, but we're also gonna be available like online study halls and stuff for our students as well to give them many opportunities for our office to check in with them on a, on a weekly basis. What type of uh, classes are gonna be online versus uh, just uh... Um, or versus the in-person classes? Pretty much everything is online unless it's a hands-on. There's, there's a select few of um, courses like in the art department and chemistries and bios like upper division classes. So I would say that almost all of our students will be online um, in the fall. Perfect. And it's a matter of every team kind of operates differently. Um, some teams are gonna need more support than other teams. And so, as Sandra mentioned, as advisors, we're kind of working through and figuring out, you know, what does the baseball need team need compared to what does the water polo team need? What does water polo need compared to what tennis needs? And so it's about kind of looking at each team individually and coming up with what works for them, what works for their coaches. All right. Well, we appreciate all the work that you guys are doing, and uh, we certainly uh, – Thank you for everything and, and keeping our teams on the uh, straight and narrow and that tough, uh, tough uh, op job of keeping everybody uh, in class and eligible. So we appreciate all of that. And uh, before we go back to the coaches, we're going to have a, a little bit of fun here. I started this um, a week or two ago where we are going to uh, show some uh, pictures here of uh, our coaches in their playing days. Uh, been a big fan of, of showing these. Is this, uh, can everybody see what I've got going on there? Nice. <laughs> got a, uh, got Thanks, a picture. <laughs> yeah, I got a picture here of Sandra who, uh, you know, she said, I played at Long Beach <laughs> State. Um, she didn't mention that she was a Hall of Famer and went to four World Series. So there's a, a picture of, uh, of Sandra there back in her playing days. Oops, went the wrong way. And Sandra doesn't bunt. Yeah. You're not bunt. Actually, I, I think I was pulling it back. It was too, not a good pitch. <laughs> nice. The, uh, I did those uniforms. We need to bring those back. I like the, uh, the stripe there on the pants. Solid stuff. Solid stuff. Um, and then we got a Gavin here. Um, Gavin's on the far left. Was it, you, Gavin, what would you say? That was uh, Team USA and – 2000. In 2000, yeah, and uh, the, the, the bald guy in the middle is Kyle Kopp. He played at Long Beach, and Shai Cordell's on the right there. Uh, also played at Long Beach State. Um, the guy behind uh, Shai and Chris Oding. Chris Oding, who's next to Shai, is uh, – you probably don't know who that is. And he's a Long Beach City coach, so there's, there's some Long Beach representation in there. And Tony Azevedo's in there as well. Hmm. All right. So some uh... – there's Gavin, Gavin there at the uh, 2000 Team USA, and then of course we got uh, we got Shayna here back in in her Michigan days, uh, scoring. Are you scoring there? Is that was that one of your? Yeah, definitely right about to score. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, another little fun fact here: we had three Hall of Famers. So. Uh, Shayna's in, in the Hall of Fame up there at uh, Michigan. Uh, Gavin is in the uh, water, 
Water Polo Hall of Fame just this last year, correct? Just uh, just put in this last year, and then Sandra's in the uh, Long Beach State Hall of Fame. So we're in good company here. Um, I have not made it into any Hall of Fames yet, so um, working on that, working on that. So, all right, coaches, we're going to give you guys uh, the floor here to say um, any closing remarks, but uh, we appreciate you guys being here and uh, just wanted to open up the floor for you guys to, uh, to tell the folks what uh, – What's on your heart? Uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate everybody jumping on here. I think, uh, you know, big thanks to Camden for organizing this. Like I said, we're, we're just trying to get through these times and taking it a day at a time here. It, it's nice to have the interaction, even though it's, it's on Zoom or, you know, on the phone or however people are staying connected. But uh, I think it, it's part of, you know, getting through these times and sticking together as a community, uh, sticking together as Long Beach. And uh, I think we all look forward to, to a time when we get back to some type of normalcy. And what that looks like, we don't know. But uh, we appreciate everyone's support out there. Uh, we're looking forward to the future. And I think we've got some, some good things coming from the, from the pool deck and from the pool from Long Beach State. So we're excited to get out there. And we hope we see some some faces out there once everyone's uh, allowed back out. So we're, we're excited. Gavin. Yeah, no, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. I know, uh, you know, maybe the zooms are, are getting old in your, in your new reality. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate you coming out, listening to us, asking questions and um, you know, and we're excited about Shana being the new women's coach. Um, I'm excited to see, uh, see how she goes with it. I know she's going to do great and, um, you know, love and support. Thank you. And actually I have a note here and I forgot to ask it earlier. I apologize, but this comes from Laird who's always got some questions about our teams heading up to, uh, to Northern California. Do you guys um, continue to plan to schedule Stanford Cal San Jose state um, so that our friends in Northern California can come to see you guys? Yeah, just don't know when. <laughs> it's on the schedule for the fall. Um, if we get pushed back, I and mean, we're actually we're supposed to go up to NorCal four times next season. Yeah, I know that. I know the guys are going up there quite a bit. Uh, at least what they have on the schedule. I think for us, we're we're staying as south as we can for the most part uh, outside of our our conference games uh, as of right now. So I think. Uh, you know, we'd love to get back up north, but uh, with, with the uncertainty of, of what the year looks like and what, what traveling looks like, uh, we're trying to stay as close to home as we can. Unfortunately, we, we love going up north, but uh, we might have to push that back until, until next year just to All play right. it safe. All right. And, of course, if uh, you can't catch the teams live, uh, we will be uh, showing them on Beach Vision as many games as we can. Um, the upcoming year. So all the games that are at home, uh, you should be able to catch um, online via Beach Vision, um, whether we have fans or not. So again, appreciate all of you guys being here and uh, we'll catch you. We're off next week, um, but we'll be back later in July. So enjoy your 4th of July weekend and uh, uh, be, stay safe out there. There's been lots of fireworks going off. My dog's going crazy. Um, so I'm sure everybody else is in the same boat, but enjoy your 4th of July and uh, stay safe. Y'all have a good one and, and go beach. Go beach. Thank beach. you, everyone. And Shana, yes, you won the GPA award. Yeah. GPA <laughs> award. I can't take any of the credit. It's all the, it's uh -huh. all the kids. So they did awesome. Yeah. It's all the kids are Gavin. I thought yeah, he, and Gavin and Gavin. I thought he took the credit already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.